The following animation is on residential circuit and wet venting in accordance to the 2015 Canadian National Plumbing Code and clauses 2531 and 2521. We'll start off with the circuit vent or the drive portion of the circuit vent. In order to size it, we need to know its developed length, which begins at the horizontal sort of waste pipe connection. In this particular case, the circuit vent ends or its developed length ends at outside air. It works out to be inch and a half according to cable 2583, counting the fixture load and its developed length. If you choose to drain a fixture or two into the circuit vent, then abide by clause 2545 and you can install a two by inch and a half double T wide with one and a half fixture unit trap arms, and it'll be two inch in size. This is a three inch circuit vented branch. It's sized according to 2416B and 2531B, whichever is bigger. Notice that all the trap arms tied to it are three inch and two inch in size. There are no inch and a half or inch and a quarter trap arms allowed to tie it into it unless they're individually vented. Here the two inch relief vent is installed downstream of the most downstream circuit vented branch fixture. The relief vent size by 2573 and 2531. In this case, it's a two inch wet vent because it's an acting relief vent. Above the acting relief vent is the drive portion of the relief vent. It's sized by 2573 or one size form circuit vent and 2571. That's why it's inch and a half. Let's take a look at the three piece wet vented bathroom below. In this particular case, 25 or table 2581 tells us you can have a maximum of three fixed units discharging into the wet vent, which will allow for a two inch wet vent. We only have one fixture unit dumping into it because the lab is dumped into a symmetrically tied in double Y, which means there's only one fixture unit tied into it, and that lets us get away with a two inch trap arm on this big bathtub in the basement. On top of the wet vent is always a continuous vent. In this case, it's inch and a half, sized by 2583 and 2571. Let's take a look at the kitchen and laundry multi story wet vent. Uh, this is perfect for a wet vent because, as you can see, we have a washing machine standpipe and a laundry tray in the basement. This is works out in accordance to the wet vending clause 2521 subsection H, which states that we can discharge up to four fixtures into a multi story wet vent on each story above the first story. Here we have one and a half fixtures from the laundry tub, and we have one and a half fixtures from above in the kitchen sink. This gives us a two inch wet vented uh, waste stack. This stack vent, as it is an extension of a wet vent waste stack is passing through one story and it's sized according to 2584 and 2571. This gives us an inch and a half stack vent on top of the multi-story wet vent. The following is an electric hot water tank installed in the ceiling. This tank will have specific rules for the drip pan. As you can see the drip pan has to be slightly larger than the tank and the drain has to be installed directly underneath the temperature pressure relief valve. Here it's piping as directly as possible to a floor drain with an air brake. It's inch and a quarter in size because it has to be two sizes larger than the temperature pressure relief valve. The air brake is the same size as the drain, in this case inch and a quarter. Let's take a look at the kitchen sink. In this case, we have a reverse osmosis system, which enhances the taste of water. We'll learn more about that in fourth year water sports. For more information on the code, search for Safe Plumbing on YouTube. There is up to 45 videos on the plumbing code in, on YouTube.